every day around 180 EasyJet passengers miss their check-in. Delayed trains, traffic jams or faulty alarm clocks all get the blame. But sometimes it's not that simple. Hey, well, not if the flight's not full. <laughs> Today at EasyJet's Liverpool base, team leader Siobhan Lett is in the firing line. So, so, you so because we were late leaving Geneva, we are screwed up then this evening. But you haven't left 90 minutes. No, hang on. Because your plane left Geneva late. Uh -huh. Your plane left Geneva late. That's why we were here late. But our plane landed Excuse before me. the Belfast one came in. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, but you've only left half. But a... hang on. Yeah, but you've only hang left. Hang on. Because mm. your plane yes. left Geneva mm. late, we are now screwed up. It it was it the McLaughlin's late arrival from Geneva means that they've just missed their check-in for their connecting flight to Belfast. Yeah, I can transfer you on to the next flight. Five, five to nine. nine. Or we're supposed to sit in the airport for five hours. What do we do here? Yeah, in the terms and for... conditions, it states that on easy jet flights, you have to leave 90 minutes between your connecting flight. This is absolute banality and craziness. The plane came in after our plane. Our plane was late, not because of us. I understand that, but you have only left half an hour between your flights, even if it had come in time. Okay. You've so, left half an so hour to come through immigration. We, the time we've been standing, the time we've been standing here talking, that bag could easily have been on. If you didn't, I mean, I could have tried for you if you didn't have bags, but you have a bag, and I can't accept you with that bag. It's too big for hand luggage. It's too heavy for hand luggage. Maybe this is a penalty for flying with the low-cost airlines. I think that's really a <laughs> message: is easy jet, low cost but the risks and the downsides are monumental. They come in off the Geneva flight, um, which landed 10 minutes late, it was during a 15.40, landed at 15.50. And they've come round, once they've got their luggage, to check in for the Belfast flight, and the Belfast flight had actually closed, and they sent their last bag down, and we can't accept any passengers that have bags onto the flight. So what do we do? Book in the next one. And sit here. Sit in this godforsaken place for... Sit in this airport for five hours. With no other option available, the McLaughlins resign themselves to a five-hour wait for the next flight to Belfast. Three weeks ago, Luton duty manager Alan Derbyshire underwent a life-saving kidney transplant. His wife, Jill, was the donor. They went ahead with the operation, despite there only being a slim chance of Alan's body accepting the kidney. I still know that that new kidney is there. I can feel it, so it's not part of me yet. Um, I would think that in time I'll get so used to it that uh, I won't even know it's there. If you want to just lie yourself down on the couch. OK. Because of the risks associated with organ transplant, Alan has to see his consultant three times a week. Just start by checking your blood pressure. Well, at the back of my mind, I've got the thought it could reject, and I don't know how I would be feeling, so... I'm the tests that they do, they obviously monitor the performance and uh, they'll let me know if things are uh, deteriorating at all. Well, because I'm feeling so well, I'm expecting them to say that everything's OK. You come back through next door as soon as you're ready. <sighs> Alan's body could reject the kidney at any time. So getting the results is a nerve-wracking affair. If I do reject the kidney, would that mean that it would have to be removed again? It's not that uncommon. About a third of people will have a rejection episode early after a kidney transplant. And in the majority of cases, we can get on top of that. Oh, so there's still a rescue? Oh, sort yes. Of thing. Oh, oh, yes. That's fine, yeah. That's good. But there's no signs of that in your case at the moment. Yeah. So everything's going extremely well. And as I say, we will see you on Monday, Monday and yeah. Thursday next week. And in the meanwhile, if we continue with the tablets and medicines just as they are. Yeah, no problem. If Alan's health continues to improve, he could be back at work soon. At Luton, a crisis is looming. A freak snowstorm has left Athens Airport in chaos and Leo Jones and his team short on information. We've already had passengers here getting reports in from Athens that it has been closed, but we didn't know what to tell them as we hadn't been told any information. What I've been told there I don't think is quite the whole story. I don't think we've been told all the information that's available to EasyJet. With more passengers arriving every minute, the situation takes the inevitable turn for the worse. The weather's getting worse out there, so it's cancelled. You just wait with everyone else. There's no putting it off. 
Leo has got to tell all 114 passengers that their flight has been cancelled and some of them could be stranded for up to three days. 200 miles away in Liverpool, the McLaughlins are back at the sales desk. It's just the, it's the new rules and regulations and so on. They're still not happy. Why is the booking accepted? Why? I, don't, I mean, a lot of people do say this, but it does state in the terms and conditions which you have to read before you click on it that you have to leave 90 minutes between. The booking was accepted and the money was taken and it was shown that obviously that's what we're going to do. I've had, I've had it before, and a lot of people have said that, but they do state that yeah, it is advisable to leave the between your flight. And they accept the booking and take the money, but they know that you can't make the connection. So if they know you can't make the connection, why, why then accept the money and the bookings for people coming from wherever to make the Belfast flight? With the flights made as two separate bookings, the McLaughlins have no option but to admit defeat. We lost our temper, which we never normally do. Um, there's no point in sitting here seething for five hours, is there? But it's worked out nice. Our daughter, who lives in Manchester, we don't see her too often because we live abroad, is now going to drive down to see us, which is nice. So we're going to have a two or three hours with her, which we wouldn't have had. So it's working out OK in the end. <laughs> a, miserable, a miserable three hours in Liverpool has been transformed for us. <laughs> Back at Luton, it's time for Supervisor Leo Jones to deliver the unwelcome news. You can stay in the queue. Unfortunately, the flight has been non made non-operational. Uh, what we need to do is get you transferred onto the next available flights. Uh, we've got some tomorrow and unfortunately not some till Sunday, so it's very important that you stay in this order in the queue. Unsurprisingly, the news is not going down well. I phoned the airport. We've been attacked because I phoned about what the What time snow. did you phone? I phoned at, half, at 8 o'clock. Okay. If we told you it wasn't going, then it would. We only found out half an hour ago you would have been more yeah. annoyed. So that's why no, we No, believe me, I wouldn't have been more annoyed. What if we told you that we if weren't told going me and then that it was you found out? Because I knew there were cancellations because of snow. We didn't know it was cancelled until 15 minutes ago. But we knew the problems in Athens. That's yeah. why we called. Basically, there's about approximately 114 people checked in in this flight, and we're going to have to get them on to tomorrow's flights, tomorrow lunchtime or tomorrow night, and at the moment, it's not looking good that we're going to have enough seats left. It's going to be a nightmare. I phoned at 11 this morning, and they said, no, there's no problem with the weather. I phoned at 6 tonight, and they said, no, there's no problem with the weather, and then I phoned at 8, just as I was leaving. Literally, as I was walking out the door, I phoned again, and they said, no, there's no problem with the weather. You know, what can you say? There's, there's patently a problem and they're just not letting people know. 13.14 tomorrow lunchtime. Do you need a hotel? Is that okay for you? Yeah. I don't have a choice, do I? No, that one or, or the evening again. With the 40 available seats on tomorrow's flights going fast and hotels and travel to be sorted out, it's going to be a long night. It's also a late night for EasyJet boss Stelios. He's deep in talks with his city financiers. Tomorrow is a very important day for the airline. It's um, almost a year since uh, we went public as a company. We listed on the London Stock Exchange. And um, it is um, the end of our financial year in, in September. So we've chosen tomorrow morning basically to tell the world how much money we made last year. It's been a long day and Stelios is off to his hotel to grab a few hours sleep. Back at Luton, there'll be no rest until all the stranded Athens passengers have been dealt with. Yeah. Basically, what it is, the flights, we've sold out, of, we've got no seats left on tomorrow's flight, which is Saturday. The no. next available flight is now Sunday. We're actually getting down to, we've got 11 seats on Sunday and lunchtime flights at the moment. Everyone else has taken the next available flight, which has been... The situation comes as a shock to some new arrivals. We've just come from Glasgow, why couldn't they have told us this in oh, Glasgow so we could have stayed at home at least? It's just the plane's actually snowed. Been in Athens. We've just been told that it's now Friday night and the next available flight to Athens is Sunday evening. Hopefully, he's just checking now. This yeah. is two days away. This is crazy. Expect us to stay <laughs> Most of the stranded passengers are transferred and off to hotels for the night. But the new arrivals aren't quite so fortunate. It's 6 a.m. and with world aviation in crisis following the events of September the 11th, Stelios is about to announce EasyJet's first-year results as a public company. Whatever the news, it should have a dramatic effect on share price. Trading doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so 
uh, we, we announce things at seven, there is uh, one hour, if you like, for people to digest what happened, and then trading uh, of the stock at the stock exchange starts at eight o'clock. People expect a good result, but it's very difficult to second guess the market. Rumor has it that EasyJet has had a very successful year, but Stelios is giving nothing away. Well, I know the results. That's why I don't worry, you see? <laughs> Everybody else is wondering, I know, so it's okay. It's also an important day for airport duty manager Alan Derbyshire. He's finally been given the green light to return to work after his kidney transplant. I've gone through the recovery stage and I feel fully ready now to get back into it. I was so lethargic and everything was an effort. But since the transplant, the energy levels have just shut up again. And now, um, say I just can't sit still, I've got to do something. Because I'm non-operational today, it'll just be a case of wandering around and saying hello to the various people and uh, reintroducing the face. At Luton, the day hasn't started well for passenger services agent Theo oh, Arjuru. It's a I'm afraid. I'm just telling you the truth here. What do you want me to say to you? Everything's all right. Lulu Bell's the bag's coming in. You're going to get your clothes. You get them from rank people. I'm not, that's not my job. job well, it's not sluggish. Simon Howell has just arrived from Belfast to go to a festival with three of his friends. But his bag hasn't turned up. It's just one of those things, what can I say? It's happened to you twice. It's bad luck. Everyone else has got their bag except you. Well, I need something sorted. I'm sorry, but it's like 24 hour service. I've lost luggage, I'm afraid. Yeah, what, what does that make me think? Not a good impression. You think that the company's crap. They haven't handled your bag properly. And you work for this company. I work for this company. You work happily for this company, which you're not saying is crap. I, I said it makes you think it's crap. I never said the company is crap. So if you were me and you came back twice, you would you still say it's crap? If I were you and but Well it depends, so I'd be biased. I've only ever used uh, EasyJet twice. Second time using, again, a bag goes missing. This time it's the only bag I've got, with all my clothes in it, for five days. So they've left me standing in the clothes I've got for five days to go to a rock concert. And just seeing a piece of paper being sent down to Lost Luggage is not enough of an effort for him. So you just sit there behind the desk and do nothing, basically. Oh, that's great. I've helped you out okay, the Where do I go for better complaints then? You want to go th we Where, speak to me about, you want to speak to a supervisor? Should I get you a supervisor to speak to? Oh, get me somebody yeah. to speak to then. Seven a.m. and Stelios is at his airline's bankers in the city. It's all right, it's all right, it's looking good. Hello. It's time for him to convince the representatives of the banking world that EasyJet is a good investment. In just half an hour, the meeting's over and spirits are high. <laughs> Stelios has just announced that EasyJet made a pre-tax profit of 30 million last year. But PR manager Toby Nickel knows the next few hours are crucial. It's a difficult process, um, knowing how, uh, how the city's going to react. Hopefully by within about sort of half an hour or so, we'll know exactly what they're saying and whether they, they see this as good news or bad news. Back at Luton, and Simon's bus leaves in half an hour. He still has no idea where his bag is. Supervisor Jana Wyatt is on hand to help. Hiya. Again, unfortunately, for the second time, easy to get lost my baggage. Okay. Obviously, all the details that we've got on here yeah. goes into our computer. There's no way they can find out where if it's in Belfast. I can go and give Belfast a call um, so that they can see if the the bag's there. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it is a case that the bag's it's, almost loaded. If the bag is there, we've got friends flying over anyway. Are you going to wait here? Oh, yeah. Yeah? That's great. We'll be back in a second. Thank you. I've got a gentleman that's just come in from um, the 352, um, and he's missing his bag. If I give you the tag number, is there any chance you can have a look see if it's still with you? They're um, going to have a look for it for him. This time, it's good news for Simon. Oh, yeah. right. They've got your bag in Belfast. In Belfast. 
It's coming in on the 354, which is the next aircraft due in here, so it'll be in here about quarter past 11. Right. We've mates We've coming mates on. flying in after us. And they could come and pick, and they up, pick it up for us because we have to get right, the Right, like you'll nine. need to give me all their details and they'll yeah. have to have ID yeah. before we hand the bag over. I just have to give them a call. Good job, Simon heads off in time for his festival, hoping his bag will only be a few hours behind him. Meanwhile, Stelios is working hard trying to persuade the business world that his airline is a good investment. I believe also that as recession is looming, more and more companies will actually take the option of low-cost flying. We'll be able to get into some airports that we didn't think it's possible before, like Gatwick or, or even uh, Orly in Paris. It's, it's a city of 10 million people, so it's a very attractive destination. And after yeah. just a few yeah. hours' work, yeah. it looks like his efforts have paid off. In, in We're up 10 pence. He's earned his money today. His share prices uh, have, have all gone up, so you know it's it, it's been a good day for EasyJet. Hopefully, it'll you know continue like this for the foreseeable future. Who knows? But you know, a good day all round. At the airport, duty manager Alan Derbyshire is getting used to being back at work. Hello, mate. How are you? Not bad at all, thanks. It's familiar territory. There's a delayed plane, and there's not enough staff to deal with the problem. Are we a bit short staffed? How's your flight going? Is it all right? Well, um, we're waiting for the crew to come off of another aircraft. We're well delayed. Loads of passengers standing up wanting to know what's going on. We're keeping them updated, but it's just a bit manic. If you've got anybody spare, it'd be lovely. I'm afraid not. That's, um, so that's the glass go. OK, Alan's going to pop up now for you. Despite not officially being on duty, Alan can't resist getting back into the thick of it. It's been an aircraft change on this one, so we had... Yeah. Crew coming off Yankee Papa going on to Yankee Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a crew change from one aircraft to another, so before they can leave the aircraft they've come in on, they've got to do security checks, check everything, nothing been left on board. Then they've got to go into the new aircraft and do the security checks again to make sure that's ready for departure. And until those checks are done, we can't allow the passengers on board. With 125 passengers waiting to get on the plane, Alan is keen to resolve the problem as soon as possible. Just going out to the aircraft now to uh, try and find out what the delay is and see if we can't chase it up a little bit. Straight back into it. They're up in the departure lounge now and I, wa I want to get them out of there. And what's, what, what's, what's the delay and everything? We've got the passengers yeah, well, all Alan, huddled around the thing. So, so, uh, the word short staff is a wonderful term to use, yeah, but do and experience it. Correct, yeah. Do you think we can start them off? Start them off, just keep them up the stairs. Start them off, Karen, yeah. I'll, I'll meet them and bring them on. Good morning, all for Edinburgh. Fine, thank you, all for Edinburgh, yeah? Good morning, good wedding. Thanks to Alan's intervention, the Edinburgh passengers will be arriving at their destination on good time. Edinburgh, sir. All for Edinburgh. Edinburgh, thank you. I am enjoying myself tremendously, yeah, again. But straight back into it, that's the only way to do it. It's like riding a bike, isn't it? All comes back to you. The same feeling of desperation as you've been assaulted by thousands. <laughs> None of the stranded Athens passengers were able to travel until the snow cleared three days later. Simon Howe was finally reunited with his bag at 11 o'clock that night. And Alan is back at work full time. And although he's not out of danger yet, it looks like his transplant has been a success.